Okay, so picture this. You finally managed to get your hands on the keys to, well, let's face it, most people's dream car. Mm -hmm. A 2021 Porsche 911 GT3. It's sleek. It's got that legendary flat six engine. It's everything you ever wanted, right? Yeah. But then mm. you hit a snag, literally. Turns out there's a recall on almost 2,000 of these GT3s. And it's not just a little squeak or rattle. We're talking about a pretty serious issue with the brakes. Yeah, and you're right to highlight that it's not just your run-of-the-mill brake problem. We're not talking about worn brake pads here. This issue was all about a software glitch, and it was a big deal because it was affecting the brake booster. And in a car like the GT3, a car designed for, well, performance, any little hiccup can quickly become a major problem. So let's unpack that a little bit. What does a software glitch in the brake booster actually mean for someone behind the wheel? What's actually happening? Well, imagine this. You're pushing your GT3 to the limit, maybe on a track day, you're coming hot into a corner, you slam on the brakes, but you don't slow down as quickly as you expect. Stop. That's the danger here. This glitch could actually increase the stopping distance, especially when you're transitioning from low to high brake pressure. You know, there's really critical moments when you need your brakes to perform flawlessly. Yeah, not exactly the kind of hard stopping thrill you're looking for when you're behind the wheel high performance machine. I was reading some comments online from owners and some were comparing it to that unnerving feeling of like stepping on a sponge when you expect a firm brake pedal. Not good. Oh yeah, those online forums, they were buzzing, weren't they? And for good reason, this wasn't just some minor inconvenience. We're, we're talking about a Porsche 911 GT3 here, a serious investment for many owners. Suddenly, there's this question mark hanging over the reliability of these cars. I mean, I can understand why some people were furious. Right. I mean, the 911, especially the GT3 variant, it's almost legendary when you think about performance and handling. For a software issue, of all things, to be the thing that's impacting that, yeah, I can see why that would be super frustrating. Totally. For a car that's always been synonymous with precision engineering, a car that's supposed to inspire confidence even when you're pushing it to the limit. Yeah. Yeah, when something like this surfaces, it really undermines that hard-earned reputation. And it's not like this was contained to just any random car forum. I mean, I was seeing these discussions pop up on dedicated Porsche forums, Reddit. You know, people were talking about it everywhere. I remember one owner even described the recall as like a punch to the gut. Another called it a betrayal of trust. Strong words. It's interesting, isn't it? Because this whole incident, it goes way beyond just the technical aspects of, you know, a brake booster malfunction. It speaks to that emotional connection that people have with their cars, especially a car like the 911 GT3. I mean, this is a car that's often seen as aspirational, a symbol of success, of automotive passion. And this issue really chipped away at that image, at least for a little while. So how did Porsche respond to this? Because this is a PR predicament, if ever there was one. Mm -hmm. So they're dealing with some seriously unhappy Porsche enthusiasts. There's a potential black eye for one of their flagship models. Mm -hmm. I mean, how does a company like Porsche, how do they even begin to navigate a PR crisis like this? Well, in this particular case, they did something I think is quite interesting. They took ownership, Porsche. They issued a recall, and it was swift. It was decisive. They told owners, look, stop driving your GT3s immediately, and we're going to offer you a free software update to fix the problem. They were very transparent about the whole thing, acknowledging the potential risks, outlining the steps they were taking to rectify the situation. I mean, they were very upfront about it. Okay, so no trying to downplay it, no sweeping it under the rug. That's got to count for something. Right. Especially yeah. these days, it feels like so often companies prioritize, you know, dodging blame over actually taking responsibility. A hundred percent. And that's where this whole thing takes on that, you know, crisis management aspect, because by acting quickly, by being transparent about it, by being decisive in their response, Portia, they managed to mitigate some of that negative fallout. You know, think about it. If they had been slow to react or if they tried to downplay how serious the issue actually was. Oh, yeah. I can imagine the headlines, Porsche cutting corners, yeah. accusations about prioritizing profit over safety. It could have spiraled pretty quickly. Absolutely. Instead, Porsche chose a different approach, a response that said, look, we messed up, but also we're going to do right by our customers. Their response, it seemed to be more about protecting their customers, about preserving the reputation of the brand, even if it meant holding their hands up and admitting they made a mistake. And I think in the long run, that might have been a much smarter strategy. It's interesting, though, because this whole situation, it really does highlight a much larger issue that's happening within the automotive industry right now, doesn't it? Because we're becoming more and more reliant on all this complex software in our cars. And as we've seen with this GT3 recall, even what seems like a really minor glitch can have some pretty major real-world consequences. 
it's that old double-edged sword, isn't it? I mean, on the one hand, we've got all these amazing advancements in automotive technology, everything from those advanced driver assistance systems to, well, even just enhanced performance capabilities, things that would seem like science fiction just a few years ago. But at the same time, the reality is we're essentially turning our cars into computers on wheels. And just like any computer, they're susceptible to bugs, errors, vulnerabilities, you name it. And it's not even like we're just talking about, you know, a, a finicky infotainment system here. Yeah. This is about systems that are critical to the safety of the car, systems that are fundamental to how the car actually operates. Exactly. Think about how braking systems have evolved, for example. It used to be all mechanical, you know, cables, hydraulics, all very straightforward. But these days you've got electronic brake force distribution, anti-lock braking systems, all sorts of incredibly sophisticated systems that are designed to optimize braking performance. But that complexity, it comes with a trade-off. Because there are more lines of code, there are more potential points of failure. So where do we go from here? because it feels like we're at a bit of a crossroads. Mm -hmm. How do car manufacturers balance this constant, this relentless drive for innovation with this absolute necessity of ensuring safety and reliability, especially in a world where cars are becoming increasingly software dependent? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And honestly, yep. there's no easy answer. Yeah, it's one of those things where you kind of have to laugh or you'll cry, mm. right? Because it's not like we can just slam the brakes on technological progress. And let's be real, no one's really asking for a return to the days of those you know, clunky, totally mechanical cars either. Yeah. I mean, where's the fun in that? It yeah. really is about finding that balance, that sweet spot where, where, where we can keep pushing the boundaries of innovation without compromising safety. And to me, a huge part of that just comes down to testing. I mean, rigorous, relentless testing, right? We're talking about pushing these systems to their absolute limits in every possible scenario imaginable and then some. We're talking simulated software glitches, extreme weather conditions, you name it, throw it at it. So basically trying to anticipate every possible what if scenario before a car even rolls off the production line. Exactly, but it's more than just the tech itself. You know, it's also about fostering this culture within the automotive industry of, well, safety and accountability. Engineers, they need to feel empowered to speak up if they spot a potential problem, even if it means, you know, delaying a launch or maybe even going back to square one with something. Which, let's be honest, can't be easy when you've got a competitive market and there's all this pressure to get the latest and greatest tech into the hands of consumers as quickly as possible. Right? Oh, for sure. But at the end of the day, if these companies, if they want to maintain that hard earned trust, that reputation they've built for reliability, they have to be willing to put safety ahead of speed. And sometimes that means those tough conversations, you know, reassessing priorities and accepting that, yeah, sometimes delays, they're just unavoidable. You know, you, you think about this whole Porsche GT3 recall it really does feel like it's shining a light on this, this pivotal moment in the evolution of the automotive industry, doesn't it? Mm. Because as cars become more and more like computers on wheels, how do we make sure that they're just as reliable, if not more so, than the cars they're replacing? And especially as we're moving toward a future with autonomous vehicles. And we're not just talking about trusting software with, you know, in enhancing our driving experience. We're talking about trusting it with our lives. It is a huge responsibility. There's no doubt about that. And it's going to require, I think, a real team effort, you know, mm. from manufacturers, from regulators and from us, from consumers. We need to be asking the tough questions about the tech that's going into our cars. We need to demand transparency. So for our listeners out there, for anyone who's maybe thinking about their next car purchase, especially if you're thinking about something with all those bells and whistles, all the latest tech, what would you say is the key takeaway from, from our deep dive on this Porsche GT3 situation? I think it boils down to this. Stay informed. Don't just get, you know, swept up by those flashy features. Really take the time to understand the technology that's driving the car. Ask questions about their safety protocols. See what you can dig up on the company's track record, particularly when it comes to recalls and how they've handled these types of situations in the past. Knowledge is power. Absolutely. And sometimes little healthy skepticism could be a good thing, right? I think this whole Porsche GT3 incident, if nothing else, it was a good reminder that even the big names, even those brands with the best reputations, they can stumble. But on a more positive note, I think it also highlighted the importance of transparency, accountability, and a real commitment to putting safety front and center. It's a conversation that I think we all need to be a part of as we move further into this really exciting, but also complex world of automotive technology. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. We'll catch you next time.